Excuse me. What's going on YouTube? It's your boy OGT Man, and today we got Where Are the Rap Snitches Now? Um, the only snitch I know, <gasps> excuse me, the only snitch I know about is Takashi. I heard he was doing pretty okay last time I checked because of all his old music that y'all, some of y'all still listen to. I ain't gonna lie. I don't listen to him no more, not because of he snitched, but because it don't, it don't feel the same no more. But he had a right reason to snitch. I don't give a fuck what y'all talking about. His people killed, well, fucked his girl, and then did something to his family. Some, some shit. Bum, yeah. With that being said, make sure to go fuck with the boy Lil Oyster. Um, without that being said, it's your boy OGT Man. Let's get started. Dee -dee. There's not many things worse that you can do for a rapper's career than to be caught telling. In a genre that's so intertwined with street code, fans are quick to write off anyone who was discovered to be an informant and not living up to their lyrics about being a real OG who stands 10 toes down. Even if some of those listeners have only seen the hood from a telescope in the suburbs, they still aren't willing to listen to a rat. But what happens after these allegations surface? And is there any way back from it? My name is Luesta, and today we're gonna discuss what happens to rappers after they snitch. And if we're talking about rappers who turned into rats, we might as well start with one of the most notorious examples, Takashi69. After a few years of trying to make it, a young Daniel Hernandez had an idea for how he wanted his new video for his track Gummo to look. Now that he was rhyming with a harder edge to his lyrics, he needed some credentials to back it up. And as he was never a gang member, he found it through hiring the infamous 9 Trey Gangsta Bloods to appear in his video. Once this formula worked, 6 ix 9 kept running with the gang and became a member. But rather than having to do dirt in the streets, Takashi, who was now racking up a gang of billboard hits, had one job for the gang. He simply had to keep making hits and giving financial support to the gang, as well as equipping them with guns so that he can get credibility and protection in return. Styled as the self-appointed king of New York, Takashi provoked everyone to try and beef with him. And when he had the protection of the gang, he could do crazy things like the time he showed up to O Block in the middle of the night since he knew that his brothers in the 9 tray would have his back. O Block right here? Mm -hmm. I should call this shit No Block. It's 10 o'clock. Where the fuck y'all niggas at? All the while, he was becoming a huge star, collaborating with the likes of Nicki Minaj, Tory Lanez, and even Kanye West. But in November of 2018, Takashi's world came crashing down. After he was arrested alongside the 9 Trey Gangster Bloods on RICO charges, it was here where Takashi was now facing 32 years in jail. Now, he had to decide. God damn. I ain't gonna lie. Do, 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 do. Um, excuse me. It was him, 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 him. Um, just keep me far away from these niggas. Click. Mm, I never said. 32 years. Nigga, all I asked for is protection. Y'all niggas ain't protecting me right here in this situation. Shit, I'll protect my ass out. Now, if they would have been like, you know, just bail us out when we can't get bailed out, you know, and you ain't got to take none. Nah, them, them niggas want you to go down with them. Fuck them. Does he want to really stick with the tough image and do his time? Or should he just work it out with the cops to get a lighter sentence? Well, he found out what he was going to do the first night he was locked up. The first night I got locked up, I watched Lone Survivor. And I was like, definitely, I'm definitely snitching, right? <laughs> and then, and then, no, seriously, I'm So from the job, no, from yeah. the job. <laughs> After all of that posturing, 6 ix 9 was going to be out in a matter of months. But no one could understand how that would work. But when he first reemerged, it seemed like he was about to pick right back up where he left off as he broke the Instagram live viewing record in his first public appearance. However, when it came time for Takashi to drop music, his sales literally halved. And rather than acknowledge it, he lashed out on the charts and claimed that he was being blackballed by the industry while other rappers were doing dirty work behind the scenes, such as buying their number one singles. Although, it was really clear that the fan base wasn't really buying it. 6 9 numbers don't lie. Also 6 9 the Billboard numbers are wrong. As most of hip-hop rejected him, he's been shot bail from the likes of Akon, who basically said that this was more commonplace than people made it out to be. In jail. 80% of the motherfuckers that's locked up right now are all cooperating with the police. There's more snitches in jail than there are so-called real niggas. Everybody in that motherfucker done cooperated. If they can get time less, the amount they was given, 
they telling, my nigga? <laughs> Even though he became accustomed to raking in tons of cash from concerts and hit songs, Takashi ended up filing for bankruptcy in May of 2022. In the paperwork, 6 9 said, Right now, I'm struggling to make ends meet. I do not know if I will ever command the kind of advances I was paid before my arrest, and my career stalled. If the court awards the compensatory and punitive damages sought by the plaintiffs at this inquest, it will surely bankrupt me in a way which I will never recover to the permanent detriment of the family members who rely upon me. After trying to make a Latin album without even hitting the charts, Takashi is basically just living on an infamy. From getting jumped in a gym with so many choices Ah, uh, damn. I remember getting jumped in a gym. I remember that. A gym to being arrested in the Dominican Republic on domestic violence charges, the headlines are about everything other than the music these days. But as Steve Will Do It from the Nelk Boys found out, he's still out here scamming people. I am mad about that. It's alright. So I got him a deal, right? Uh huh. To play video games with Rumble. Once a week. Uh huh. For an hour. Yeah. Two million up front. And it just doesn't do it. It's crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty much that simple. It, but it, it's the fact that he, he had no money at the time and he needed money to fucking, uh, he breaks up with his girlfriend and he needs money. And like, dude, you see these videos of him giving my money and stuff, it's never his money. It's like when he gives his mom a car, it's, it's him buying himself a car. Like, he doesn't, he's not a nice person. After all that's been said and done, Takashi has gone from telling people to test his gangsta to being the poster boy for how falsified the culture can be by people like Logic. It's very evident, right? I'm not talking shit. I'm just saying that he puts on this 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 character, especially if you judge based off what he said in court. I ain't st trying to fucking start beef with 6ix9ine. I'm just using an example <laughs> that there are some rappers out there that are more about a persona and a personification. And because of that, when people shit on their music or shit shit on them it doesn't matter because they're not really portraying who they are on the record although his career is in a horrible state as of right now at least 6ix9ine had a lengthy time at the top well, for Spot em, Got em, his snitching allegations were so bad that rappers like Lil Durk literally refunded him $100,000 for a verse he did just because he didn't want to be affiliated with him anymore. Back I remember Spot em, Got em. Uh... Bitch, I got more shit. Don't get started. I don't know if that was him, but yeah, I remember his ass. 2020, you couldn't escape Spot em Gotham's breakout hit Beatbox. Considering it got remixed by basically half of the industry, it made it seem like this Florida rapper had a promising and successful career ahead of him. However, when news surfaced that he didn't even stutter in snitching on one of his own friends started emerging by media outlets, it really brought his whole thing down. Basically, the story is this. In June of 2020, Spot em Gotham was caught with guns and marijuana at a Florida residence alongside YNR Mookie. Once the cops showed up, Spottom hastily gave his homie up, with claims that he was asleep when the cops initially arrived, and that Mookie was freaking out because he had a weapon on him. The facts are, Spottom told the police he saw Mookie with a gun and hinted that some pills weren't his, leading to Mookie's arrest while Spottom got him got to leave. Ultimately, Mookie beat the case because the cops didn't file the right paperwork. While for Spottom got him, it was time for damage control. They're saying you're, you snitched on YNR Mookie and there's a lot of noise out yeah. there about it. Papers been leaked and all that. Allegations flying around. What's your side of the story? Just let's set the record straight. Nah, man, Mookie, we talk. That's it's some old shit. I don't know. Like I never seen, I never seen it, but I seen it on the internet. I guess the police put whatever the allegations they put. But me and Mookie, we we cool. That's my brother. I don't know how I got it on the internet. Police put that shit up. There, I mean, there's like we like a drop, drop, and we both went to jail for like 21 days for it. Got out, and they were like, "That shit sound like some bullshit." But he could be telling the truth. I don't really know. All I know is at the beatbox. I hear a beat from that motherfucker, except the beat that he would be knocking on that wall. That's it. To make matters worse, even well-known enemies like Fulio and Young Ian Ace could all agree on one thing, and that's the fact that the beatbox rapper was a rat. I mean, Spam Gamma, this is a this is told on his homeboy. I never told him no. I had homeboys telling on me. I know how that feel. I never tell him no. On you, boy. Try it and when die behind it.
Try as he might, his career has never been the same since. And these days, he's predominantly in the news for all the wrong reasons. Like the time he got shot and arrested. If all that didn't happen, things could have been so much different for him. At one point, Lil Durk, whose own father is now behind bars after being snitched on, gave back 100k for a feature that he had already recorded and refused to let the track come out. For a lot of people, Durk's ruling further solidified what people thought about him. But although they think that the Chicago rapper was right on this occasion, his decision not to work with Spot on Gotham, but record a verse for real Boston Richie, has been seen as a little hypocritical. For those who don't know, Boston Richie is a Tallahassee rapper who has signed the Futures as Free Band's label, and he's had plenty of buzz in recent years. Despite only beginning to rap in 2021, Boston Richie's early tracks like Keep Dissing made an immediate splash. But before he could really build a major brand, his career was sent into a tailspin when news emerged that he cooperated with a 2013 police investigation, explaining his involvement with a stolen car alongside two conspirators. The reactions were as expected, so Richie tried to tell his side of the story. So we go to the TVD station, you know, I'm on some shit like, but them boy really ain't know the car was stolen. This my will. Yeah. So like the police like took that from as in saying like, Oh, me saying they was in the whip to me, they knew the car was the knowledge that's being stolen, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But that was never the case. Like, on top of denying that it caused a strain on he and Future's relationship, he also suggested that the public... God damn. Niggas going down for the... Snitching, snitching, snitching. This is why I don't put myself in dumb shit. Exactly why. Can't even do it. The publicity was actually helpful to his career. Shit, my, my number up. I ain't gonna say all publicity, good publicity, but it's just like shit. It's just sometimes it's just what it come with. You feel me? Like, yeah. Nigga can't be no great if a nigga ain't never, if a nigga can't recall you going through a certain situation. Although he is right in the sense that things haven't really stalled and he's still getting a lot of attention, it still hasn't completely gone away. And this isn't even the only time he's been accused of snitching. So videos like this ultimately haven't helped. But then again, this is what I'm trying to tell you, like, I don't think he, he, cause he was like, but I know, we know for a fact, the reason we know they hang, because Eddie, Eddie gave him, his mama gave him, and all, um, his own. Um, once this video did the rounds, he proclaimed that he threw the cops off the scent with false information, but not everyone is so eager to accept this story. And fans did him dirty in the comments. He's doing a promo run for his next album, The Boston Plea Party. I'm not messing with anyone who talks to police for a whole hour. While he's still doing pretty well, it's hard to imagine he wouldn't be doing a little better if these allegations weren't hanging over his head. In this sense, Richie received a favorable outcome. However, it's important to note that not every everyone experiences such leniency. I mean, just look at what happened to Pop Hunna. A Philly rapper who was among the first rappers to really pop off on TikTok, Pop Hunna was off to a flying start with Corvette Corvette. Soon, he even had Lil Uzi Vert on the remix entitled Adderall. But just when things looked to be going so well, news emerged that back when he was 14 years old, he talked to the cops after his friend was killed. Once the paperwork was issued, the Philly MC was basically disowned by the game that he was just entering. And Wow, that shit is crazy. I'm snitching, nigga, too. What the fuck? That's my boy who died. What is you talking about? As he might to defend his actions as that of a scared child, it felt like nobody wanted to hear it. Man, I be wishing all the time that I never went through that shit, bro. Ain't, bro, ain't no kid supposed to go do no shit like that, bro. I was a kid, bro. Ain't no kid supposed to go through no shit like that, bro. I seen some shit that a kid wasn't supposed to see. And then, bro, I gotta live with that. Like, bro, that's gonna always be in my mind. I, bro, bro, I have to live with that shit. I don't even sleep, bro. Bro, I don't go to sleep at night, bro. I do not sleep, bro. Every time I close my eyes, bro, I see that shit happening over and over and over and over and over again, bro. I really wanna have fun, bro, even being a rapper, bro. After, bro, after shows and shit, bro, bro, like, I used to cry, bro, after every show, bro. Although a screenshot went around claiming that Uzi asked to be taken off the remix, Pop says that never happened, but that he still got completely ghosted by him. I start seeing a screenshot, right, that it was Uzi saying to you, like, yo, bro, I don't want to be on your tape no more. Please, could you take, take me off your tape? Because, like, you're telling on people. Bro, let me explain something to you, right? 
dude never said this shit, bro. He never ever said that. So he never asked to be taken off your tape, bro. Dude, that's the last message, just right there, bro. He never said that, bro. Like, don't you think if he would have said some shit like that, it, like it would have been in there? Since I wasn't saying any, like, since I wasn't saying anything about it, why didn't you say nothing? Like, that, that's the easy like line to disprove. Just, just, just that shit said, was an though. indictment. I'm gonna be honest. When I when I saw that, I said, "Oh shit!" Like Uzi's on the hottest song, and if he's asking not to have that song, he on never it. said that, bro. Like, bro, he never said a word to me about that. Like, since that shit came out, bro, we ain't say nothing to each other. While Pop Hanna had to lose a friend and then let go of his connection to Uzi, another of hip hop's most infamous snitches didn't hesitate to turn into an informant on one of his own. And that was Big Mike, a longtime member of O Block. Oh, y'all niggas snitching up in the north? In the north? No. I thought all y'all bitches was hard. Y'all, the snitching in the north. I don't know who the hell Big Mike is, but I know you a big bitch. Brother of the infamous STL member Wooski, Big Mike caught a murder case when a young man named Malcolm Stucky was shot at a party. According to reports, King Von had been at the event when things got tense, at which point he called Big Mike for backup. After the 19 year old. Anyone with 10. Call Big Bitch for backup. Why would you call a Big Bitch for backup? Year-old was murdered. Mike and Vaughn were eventually brought in for questioning, and knowing that there were so many witnesses at the party, Mike felt like he had no other option but to cooperate with law enforcement. Once I got presented with what was going on and what it was, I knew the best way for me to get up out this. Well, I didn't know. I thought the best way for me to get up out this shit was the hell of my shit. Them niggas hired me first. Basically, said one thing led to another. Said, you know, did the COs or other MSD you troubles? You know, no way. Ooh, me? Yeah. Tell you, ain't no nigga play with me. In town, getting off as lightly as possible, Mike even offered to snitch on an additional killing just to help his case. Defendants asked if it would be helpful for him if he gave the detective information about the shooting and another murder. Despite his best efforts, Mike still received a hefty 28 year sentence, which likely came down to the fact that once it took time to take the stand, he refused to snitch on Vaughn. Although he was scheduled for nearly three decades of incarceration, Mike only ended up spending nine years in prison. But somehow, he's still telling on Vaughn and his press run since emerging from jail. Yeah, like we had a motive on why we was doing the shit we was doing. I would say he was no serial killer, but he will kill. Where no one would deny that what Mike did was snitching, one artist who has benefited from the gray area over what is telling and what isn't is Gunna. Just a couple of years ago, Gunna was unquestionably one of the most beloved figures in hip hop. Known for working with the biggest names in the A, Gunna's career reached his peak with 2022's DS4 going number one. However, he didn't have much time for a victory lap, as soon, he was jammed up in the Rico case against Young Thug and YSL, as the Fulton County DA attempted to portray them as a violent street gang. Suddenly locked up, no one thought Gunna would turn on his mentor and Thugga. Although he did have previous offenses, such as the time he appeared on CNN's Crime Stoppers as a teenager. But it was clear that he had no intention of spending years behind bars. Immediately, his lawyers insisted he wasn't about that life, saying, there is no allegation that he committed any acts of violence. There is no allegation that he ever sold any drugs. There is no allegation that he ever committed any act relating to obstruction of justice or interfering with the administration of justice. Left with the option of staying in jail without bond or tasting freedom again, he chose to go for an Alford plea. For those who aren't familiar with this term, it's basically a guilty plea in which a defendant maintains their innocence, but they admit that the prosecution's evidence would likely result in a guilty verdict if brought to trial. With that, Gunna was back outside and immediately, he tried to get ahead of those inevitable snitching allegations. Such as the time he said this to WSB TV in a statement after the news broke. While I have agreed to always be truthful, I want to make it perfectly clear that I have not made any statements, have not been interviewed, have not cooperated, have not agreed to testify or be a witness for or against any party in the case, and have absolutely no intention of being involved in the trial process in any way. My focus of YSL was entertainment. Rap artists who wrote and performed music that exaggerated and glorified urban life in the black community. Try as he might, not everyone was buying it, and before long, longtime collaborators like Lil Baby and Lil Durk had unfollowed him. Meanwhile, leadership of the label like YSL Mondo couldn't believe what he had done. Boy, you didn't supposed to do that, my brother. Even though if you, I didn't be talking about it. everybody who got common sense, everybody who's been in the streets, no, you do not. But you don't do no. I didn't. 
Based upon how angered people were by the idea that he betrayed Thugger, it really looked like there might be no way back for him. In fact, many OGs thought it was a wrap. The film in court came out and, you know, of course his lawyer wrote that. He didn't write that. His lawyer probably wrote that. But now in these days, we got the camera, it just looks like, you know, they're gonna say, you pushing please, we ain't fucking with Gunner. Because, I mean, in this business, if you turn into a rat, it's kind of like career's over. Yep. Me, I would have rather sat a little longer, because I was only in there for a year. I would have sat a little longer than coming out to, to what the internet do. Yeah, because I mean, that's just my opinion. But as bad as things looked for Gunna, he would eventually return to what he does best and went on to drop his album, A Gift and a Curse. Suddenly forced to stand on his own two feet without any guest verses, the record landed at number three and delivered some major hits like Fuck You Mean and Back to the Moon. Named Complex's number one album of the entire year, Gunna is now heading out on his bittersweet tour. As a result, he's become one of the only rappers ever to be accused of snitching and turn it into a victory lap. Through what happened to the white... Yep. Only one of the only goddamn. But that's the end of the video. Um, yeah. I don't really know what to say about this video except that if you're gonna get yourself into that type of shit, don't go around, don't go around talking your fucking mouth off to get you knew what you was getting yourself into. That's why I don't put myself in the street life because that ain't me. I come from the struggle. I come from, you know, living in poverty. But I don't come from murder. I don't come from none of that. It's, it's been a couple of times where I had to beat some niggas ass and run off. It's been a couple of times where I had to go into that stove and swipe out some. I'm not saying stealing is good. I'm not saying that you should be doing that. But I know where I came from. And I know damn well I'm not getting myself into no type of gang shit. That's not for me. I'll be the first one to say it. I'm a bitch. I'm a bitch when it comes to going to jail. And it's not, it's like, it's not even a, you know, make fun of nobody who, you know, I'm just saying, I could never. You can, you can accuse me from stealing, you can accuse me from beating people ass, and then you, you can accuse me for all some other, except, except doing some, pet, doing some P-E-D-O shit, and if y'all know, y'all know, and being in the game. That's just not me. A guy losing his career because he told the police what he saw when he was 14 as of was his friend is insane. I swear to God, street cred is so dumb. I'm telling you. Then the street did pop on us so dirty. Like, bro, he was 13, 14 for revenge of his friends. Like, are you serious? This was some real clown behavior from the rap industry. I swear. Kids hate all the... Or oh, rapper snitching wise, they know they would do the same thing if they were in that situation. Oh God! Anytime someone gets famous, the crabs and the I could always try to pull them down in the mud. Being mad about a 14-year-old talking to cops is wild. I swear to God, that shit is wild to me. But um, anyways, it's your boy OG T Man signing out. Yiddy.